Hello everyone, we are Will and Alex, and today we're in Balzano. Actually, in February of 2022, we were in Balzano. In this video, we'll tell you how we got there, where we stayed, what we did, and touch on some snowboarding in the Dolmites if you're interested in that. At the end, we'll share a list of our recommendations for you to screen grab. First of all, getting there. We drove to Balzano, Italy from Germany and it's highway almost the entire time. We entered Italy through the Brenner Pass, so be prepared to pay that toll and every other toll in Italy. Where we stayed. We chose our hotel because of the parking space. You can't physically drive in Balzano without a special pass for your car, so parking and driving there can be really tricky. We found a hotel right outside the Ballards that provided a paid parking spot, and we could easily walk into town from there. There's also a parking deck nearby called Walther Square Parking. It's all underground and super walkable to the city. We want to give you a tour of our hotel at the Pepper Lounge and Suites. We got this place because we have friends visiting and we thought it'd be a great place to congregate before we go out into the Balzano proper and they have free breakfast. So it's a good deal. All right, so first you enter and there's the lounge area with a pull-out couch, which is good for friends. Kitchenette area right here. Not a full kitchen, but like a good size kitchen area with a stove top and a microwave even. And a little coffee maker with actual coffee pods. So it's very thoughtful, we appreciate that. I mean, the bathroom is fine. It's a good size, good size shower. Next, the bedroom is upstairs and there's a fun surprise in the form of Killer stairs. I don't really want you to film me doing this. <laughs> Look at them. We're not going to bring our suitcase up here because it's kind of ridiculous. All right, I'm going. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, nice lounge up here. Good little apartment. We're excited to go explore Bozano, so we're going to get some food now. Woo. Now for what we did. Balzano is the capital and the largest city in South Tyrol and therefore has a lot of things to do. The city was ruled by Bavarians and Austrians for hundreds of years and you'll notice the cultural blend right away. We definitely recommend reading up on the history ahead of time. On our first full day, we picked up some delicious baked goods and walked through the market streets with all the fresh produce and flowers. I'll leave a good link below with a list of all the daily, weekly, and seasonal markets. We made our way to the Victory Monument built by Mussolini after World War I. It has been a symbol of contention between the Italian and German speaking communities and when we were there it was fenced off. We also visited the Dominicans church. The church is in the Gothic style and was built in the late 1200s and expanded into the 1300s. St. John's Chapel is inside on the right. It's small and dark but that somehow makes it more magical as you admire the beautiful frescoes. We also visited the arcades, known as one of the best shopping streets. As far back as the 1100s, it was one of Balzano's best and only streets and the heart of commercial life. We spent the morning at the archeological museum seeing the Iceman exhibit and it was really, really good. It was 1350 for adult and it was three to four floors full of exhibits about the Iceman himself and then the Copper Age and then about DNA testing that they did for him and all the forensics involved in that. And then there was a larger kind of migration of Europe exhibit on the top floor. One of the interesting facts that was portrayed in the exhibit was that based on some of the things that they found, including his copper axe, they actually backed up the original start period of the Copper Age. So he literally changed history with the discovery of the Iceman in 1991. Mm -hmm. So really not even that long ago, about 30 years ago, they discovered the Iceman in the Tyrolean Alps and uh, were able to discern a lot more facts about history and the Copper Age and kind of early man. Yeah, I remember learning about him in sixth grade social studies class and I didn't realize until today um, that they found so many other things on his person that were really, really well preserved as well, like his whole backpack and a lot of the contents in there a lot of his clothes were able to be reconstructed from the pieces that were left i think we spent about an hour and a half exploring the whole museum mm -hmm. so definitely budget for that if you uh, are in a rush mm -hmm. 
And after that, we headed over to the market, which is near the Victory Monument. And every Saturday, there's a market. And there was a ton of clothing. It was mostly a clothing market, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then there were parts that were cheese, some food, and like vegetables, and some home goods and things like that. Yeah. They have yeah. some leather bags and wallets and purses. Mm -hmm. So you can get a variety of different things here. But I think it runs from 6 to... Six maybe six to six on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll put a description below. Yeah. If you're a bargain hunter, they had some giant piles of clothes that range from like one to ten euros. There, there is some really affordable things there. After that, we went to the Walter Piazza and just had some snacks and drinks. Had some local wine from the region, La Rhine and Santa Maddalena. And mm -hmm. I had some pasta pomodoro because one in Italy. <laughs> Balzano has a really pretty town center and there's so many good alleyways and things like that to explore. Well, we have dinner in about an hour and a half and we're probably gonna get some pizza. Tomorrow, get up early for snowboarding. We had our dinner at Casa al Torquio or the Torgel House. It is said to be the oldest restaurant in Balzano. Because of that, be sure to make a reservation for dinner. After dinner, we went to the Batson Housel for some beer flights. They had a ton of different options. We would definitely recommend it. The next day, we drove to Canizé so that Will could snowboard the Dolmites. I will say that this route was not a highway and involved a lot of switchbacks. You need to have winter tires on the car, and it's best to have snow chains ready as well. And always make sure you descend a mountain in sport mode to engage engine braking. We've learned that the hard way. In Canizé, Will got the Dalmighty Super Ski Pass, which was about $67 for one day. He had access to 12 different resorts and absolutely amazing views. Unfortunately, the cost would be the same if I went, whether I was skiing or not. We chose to save the money and I hung around town, but he'll make a separate video on snowboarding there soon. Canizé is a super sleepy town from what I experienced. There was one spot for apres ski, but it seemed like the best time of year to visit would be Carnival. The one interesting thing I found was House La Floriana, a private residence decorated with paintings, statues, and lacy carved pine. If you're going to the Dolomites to ski, we wouldn't recommend staying in Balzano. It would be a lot more fun to stay where there is apres ski and you don't need to drive over an hour to get there. Staying in any of these places with chairlifts and resorts would be better, and we thought that Araba looked especially fun. Now, as promised, here's our PDF of recommendations to screenshot in three, two, one. We really enjoyed staying in Balzano for a long weekend. There are plenty of restaurants and shopping to keep you busy, and Otsi was definitely a highlight for me. While you're in the mountains, it gives you more of a small city vibe than a quaint Alpen village. To get the good views, you'll have to embark on some summer hiking or drive a little further east. As always, please leave your Balzano recommendations in the comments and thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.